Hello there and welcome to Fairyland Cottage and thanks very much for joining me here today. I thought I'd share a few ways I help improve the soil in the garden using what I already have available. So at the moment I'm heading out to get a few wood chips and we got a little surprise when we were on our way and I just thought these little baby pheasants were too cute not to include in the video. It's the first time I have ever seen baby pheasants. We don't always have to go out to a shop to buy something new, especially for the garden. There's so much around us that can be utilised for free. And something that would be usually thrown away can be used in another capacity somewhere else. And I always try and remember that nature knows all the answers. And whatever is good for nature is also good for us humans. All we have to do is stop and observe and we can learn so much, giving nature room to breathe and show us the way. I love the documentary The Need to Grow, if any of you have seen it. It highlights the importance in looking after our soil. And did you know that a handful of soil has more organisms than people on this planet? And yet nearly half of the most productive soil has disappeared in the world in the last 150 years. And this is because of things like tilling or lack of cover crops, the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticide use. And what happens is because of these activities, the soil becomes stripped of the nutrients minerals and microbes that it needs to support healthy plant life. And we all know that we need soil to be able to grow food and we need food to be able to live. So it's hugely important. The way I think of it is that I'm working with nature rather than against it. And then this will lead to a biodiverse ecosystem. And that's really what we want in the garden and all over the world. So an easy way to help improve the soil is by using cardboard. Now, when you're using it, you just make sure that it's completely plain cardboard making sure there's nothing shiny or not tons of writing on it. And cardboard is a great thing to put on the grass or even the soil. And as cardboard breaks down, it releases carbon into the soil. And carbon is what gives the soil its water retention capacity, its structure, its fertility. So it's hugely important. And it will attract all the worms and then on top, what you can put on is either some compost, but I was putting on some wood chips. And over the months, the cardboard will decompose and you'll be left with this wonderfully nutritious soil. And then what I'll do is I'll plant some flowers around the pond. And you can use this method before planting vegetables or plants or flowers. So it's a great way of getting your soil ready. It's simple and it's slow. So 
So in the back garden, I've been doing it a lot. And then when the cardboard has decomposed down, it makes the soil so easy to dig into. And I've noticed much richer, there's more worms. And anything that I plant in, I'm giving it a really good chance to grow well. So I'm just planting some rosemary in here. It wasn't doing well in the pot. And cardboard is a really easy thing to use because we can mostly get it for free. You can even ask in recycling centers, they can give you some. I'm able to get it in work. And anytime you get some cardboard packaging, you can then consider keeping it and using it in the garden. Another thing I do to improve the soil is, you've probably heard of it before, a banana tea fertilizer. So there's so many fertilizers out there in garden shops. A lot of them are synthetic, but it's so easy to just make one for yourself at home. I'll collect all the banana skins and these would be organic bananas. So to my knowledge, they haven't been sprayed. I'll store them in the fridge until I have a nice amount and then place them into a jar. All you do is cover it with water, up above all the banana skins and just leave it for a week. And banana skins are rich in potassium, phosphorus and calcium, among other things. So these are great minerals for the soil. And a week later, you've got this gorgeous, nutritious juice. And the way I use it, I've read a few different things. They say about a one to five ratio. So I'm usually not hugely exact, but I'll put about, you know, one cup to five cups and I'll use it on the little vegetable seedlings at the moment, but you can also use it in your house, on your house plants. And they will really thank you for it. Another thing I do to help improve the soil in the garden is use food scraps directly into the soil. So this works if you haven't got any compost system available. You dig down about 20 centimeters and you plant food scraps. What I will do is I won't have any meat. There'll be no dairy. I also don't put in citrus peels because I find that the worms don't really like them so much. So they take too long to decompose. And if you chop the things up, the smaller, the better. So decomposing organic matter allows the soil to soak up and hold the moisture. It also allows oxygen to the roots of the plants and it provides a constant supply of nutrients and minerals. It's a really easy way of composting food scraps by cutting out the middleman. And this will attract all the worms and the more worms you have in your soil, the better. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'd really love to know down below any tips you have for improving soil chat over on Instagram and if you did like this video it really helps when you give it a thumbs up. So have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.